Hello and welcome to this lecture series on the Seven Years War. Today we're going to start with part one, tensions in Europe. As I mentioned before, the uh, English colonies in the Americas grew at a far greater rate than the other nations' colonies. Right By 1770, you had 2.15 million people living in the English colonies. Compare that to, like for example, New Spain. New Spain was by far larger than the English colonies, yet it only had between 20 and 30,000 Spaniards living in it, right? New France, the same kind of thing is at play, about 90,000 Frenchmen living in New France. So uh, the English colonies are exponentially larger, right? Um, and there's a whole series of intrigues and stuff still going on in Europe, right? That didn't stop just because they began colonizing. As a matter of fact, if anything, it got worse, right? Spain was in a state of perpetual decline. This was brought on largely due to pirating and, and overexpansion and investing money in religious wars, right? They had not been the same since their defeat uh, by the uh, English, the Spanish Armada there in 1588. And they'll continue on this decline until really the final, uh, um, the final snub will take place when the United States will engage in a war with Spain in 1899, right? But you're going to have a whole series of proxy wars uh, pop up during this time, right? Now, proxy wars are just wars that are fought on someone else's territory. In other words, it's when the main combatants are not fighting on their home turf or the turf of their enemy. I'll give you a good modern example. The Korean War was really a product of the United States versus the Soviet Union, right? More so than the North Koreans versus the South Koreans, right? But there was no fighting in the United States or the Soviet Union. Just to give you a feel for this, here's some examples of these proxy wars, right? Like, for example, in 1689, there's going to be the War of the League of Augsburg. And this is quite literally a case where the British Parliament had contacted William of Orange in the Netherlands and asked him to come invade England, right? Here's the reason why they did that. Remember, we reestablished Charles II to the throne. The House of Stuart was reinstated, right? Charles II, on his deathbed, it is said that he converted to Catholicism and took confession, right? So he was a closet Catholic, all right? Well, that's not a big deal because he died, right? But his brother, James, became James II, and he was an open Catholic. And to the people of England by this point, Protestantism in the Anglican Church is deeply entrenched. Catholicism is, you don't want your king to be Catholic, right? And so... At first, they're like, well, this isn't going to be a problem because he's old. All he has is two daughters. They are both married off to Protestant uh, uh, royalty in Europe. And so when one of them, you know, dies or when, when James dies, Mary will take over. If not, uh, Anne will become Queen Anne. Not a problem. But then here in his later years, James II got remarried. He was a widower. And his wife became pregnant. And everybody went, oh, no. Right? And he had a baby, and it was a boy. And because of the rules of secession, that boy was going to become the king. And, of course, because it was James's son, he's going to, of course, have him raised Catholic. And the people of England and the Parliament couldn't have that. So they contacted William of Orange, who was the husband of Mary Stuart, right? So there's your link to the throne, and said, will you please invade us? And he does. And so you kind of have this proxy war as the other European powers take sides in this war of the League of Augsburg, right? And we see the same thing happen in 1702, the War of Spanish Secession, right? Uh, King Charles II of Spain had died, right? And he had left no children. And if you ever look at a portrait of him, you'll know exactly why he didn't have any children. This guy had a lot of issues, and he really is a visual uh, uh, sign of Habsburg inbreeding, okay? So... You had the French that wanted to establish uh, Philip, who was from the House of Bourbon, to the king. And then you had the Habsburg that had their own king in mind. And again, a war broke out that involved everybody else, and to a lesser degree, the major parties, all about who gets to be the king of Spain. Same thing happens in 1740, the War of Austrian Secession. It's just another example. This time, Emperor Charles the uh, VI is going to die, and it's going to touch off a series of continental wars to decide who is going to take over the Habsburg Empire. It's all these power plays going on. Well, ultimately, this is also going to spill over into the Americas, as it often did. And in the case for what we're talking about, we're going to see uh, the results of one of these proxy wars in the Seven Years' War between France and England.